Hey guys, here we are again with postmodernism, the last and final lecture. Okay, what is it? Postmodernism refers to a literary movement as well as movements in art, architecture, sociology, sociology, and scholarship. Not everything produced in this period is postmodern, and because postmodernism is such a wide-ranging and difficult movement, not all postmodern texts will share the same elements. But it's a movement in a lot of different things. When did it start? So what is this period? It's not immediately clear. <laughs> it's definitely after World War II. So let's say ballpark is kind of like 1950-ish. Some people might say, did it? does it have an ending point? Is it over? That is also unclear. Some people might say we are still in a postmodern period. Others have concluded that postmodernism is over, although there is absolutely no consensus on if it's over, what has replaced it. So basically, ballpark figures, this period would be about 1950 until now. Postmodernism is most easily understood in its relationship to modernism. And it is primarily a difference in valence, or what I would call attitude. Elements of postmodernism, and there are a ton. A lot of them have to do with awareness. Metafiction, fiction that is aware of itself as fiction. For example, there is a, um, I think it's a Neil Stevenson novel that the protagonist, the, the main character of the novel is called Hero, H-I-R-O, protagonist. A gesture that basically tells you that this is metafiction, right? This is fiction that is aware of itself as fiction. Again, self-referentiality, fiction that refers to itself. N meta narrative, narratives that are about narratives or telling stories. Uh, like the movie Memento, um, Simulacra, a simulated copy of something. Simulacra are big in postmodernism. Pastiche, pastiche is a parody or imitation of a style. Uh, and, some, and it's sometimes usually a collection of, of styles. For example, the movie Kill Bill is a really postmodern movie because there's a pastiche of different styles of filmmaking, right? Like part of that movie is a cartoon, part of that movie is done in a different style, part of that movie is done in black and white, right? Um, it's also highly ironic. Irony is one of the hallmarks of postmodernism. Intertextuality, multiplicity, hybridity, um, instead of purity, right, something being only one thing, being many things, being hybrid, whether that comes like a hybrid kind of identity or a hybrid kind of text, it's a hallmark of postmodernism. Parody, paradox, camp, kitsch, relativism, the fragmentation of the society and the self. Hey, relativism and fragmentation, these things sound like modernist elements. They are. What makes them postmodern then? In modernism, somebody like, say, T.S. Eliot would see the fragmentation of society as, oh my gosh, it is so horrible, where it's postmodernists just have a completely different attitude. This is great. This is wonderful. The fragmentation of the self, same thing. This is great. You can be who, you know, you can be seven different people, right? That's great. You can be like Madonna or Britney or Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga is a very postmodern kind of figure. <clears throat> the same with relativism. Modernists were really upset that there was no single truth anymore available to them. Postmodernists think that's great. So a lot of the different, you'll see many elements of modernism, but the difference is that modernists were really upset that their society was that way, and postmodernists love it. Um, also, okay, the awareness that things like history, society, gender, race are social constructs and commodification. The commodification of art, turning everything into something that can be bought or consumed. Um, very aware of that. Also, uh, when, if we think about hybridity and pastiche and camp and kitsch, um, and we talked about mo modernism was a very elitist um, 
movement that we have that distinction between highbrow, middlebrow, lowbrow. We still have those distinctions in postmodernism, but there's a lot more mixing, and the mixing is seen as a good thing. A mixing of highbrow and lowbrow, mixing of um, different genres, of different styles, and that mixing is thing. Uh, we could also see it as fragmentation, is seen as a good thing. So um, these are the elements of postmodernism. And a lot of it is a different adage. Well, differences between postmodernism and modernism. Okay, I already kind of said fragmentation is good now. Postmodernists, right, are f just feel liberated and freed by the restraints of having to, you know, uphold Western civilization. Relativity, good now too. Individuality. Now it doesn't really exist. <laughs> okay. Modernists like Virginia Woolf encouraged others to look within and stressed individuality. But postmodernists see individual selves as unstable and unreliable. The self is only created through performance and therefore cannot really be known. For example, oh, this is the poll. Oh, well, I'll, I'll come back to that. The value of art and the artist. Modernism emphasized the role of the artist in creation. Postmodernism does not because of that. The Think of the simulacra, the, the focus on copying things. Um, pastiche would be taking things from different genres, or perhaps taking things that have already been created and gluing them together. Anyway, we'll talk a little bit about simulacra. The theorist Jean Baudrillard said that in postmodern societies there are no originals, only simulacra or copies. Actually, uh, attentive watchers of The Matrix will know that Neo hides his, um, whatever that bootleg stuff that he's making and selling that those programs at the beginning of the Matrix, he has a copy of Jean Baudrillard's um, book on simulacra and simulacrum that's hollowed out and that's where he keeps it. And the Matrix is also really Im invested in that idea, right? There, there are no originals, there are only copies. Um, the value of copies, things like that. Think about the difference between, say, medieval life and medieval art in our culture now. A medieval book was a work of art. It was produced um, perhaps by many people, right, uh, illustrating and copying out the letters, but it was incredibly valuable, and it's not like you just print it off you know, a thousand, right? You need the printing press to start doing that. So you would have a book. The book itself was a work of art. It was incredibly valuable because there was only one, right? When we get mass book production, uh, the, actually 20th century paperbacks, paperbacks are really cheap and you can print a bunch of them. The value of the book declines, right? When you could write only one book, when it was your Gutenberg Bible, it's priceless. It's worth millions and billions of dollars. When you can make a million books, <coughs> right, they all only cost one, right? So that uh, model, the value was on the original, right? The original held all the value. The copies had no value. We don't live in that society. Okay, starting again. I don't know why that messed up. Thinking about simulacra, thinking about what I said about originals and copies. Think about this picture, Las Vegas, a city completely constructed of copies, um, and where in a lot of the attraction is the copy. Um, you know, there are people who want to go to Las Vegas and see, go to the Paris Hotel, that don't want to go to Paris and see the Eiffel Tower, right? I mean, so this is a city that is built on copies. Las Vegas is very postmodern. Thing going back to, I said we come back to the idea of stable identity, that there's no, under postmodernism holds, that there kind of like is no real identity. Look at these three pictures of Madonna. Which one is the real Madonna, right? There's no way to know that, right? Her, her character is completely created through performance and she's constantly changing it. She's constantly changing her identity, right? From material girl to whatever this was, blonde ambition, basically dominatrix, sexual dominatrix, to 
this more softened, hippie-ish, Kabbalah-worshipping woman right here, right? So she, and I mean, look, her face has changed, right? She has altered herself in a variety of ways, um, but constantly changing. There is no real Madonna. There is no real Britney. There is no real Lady Gaga. They're all just a series of performances. Okay. I'm going to do this as an example for you guys. This is one of Andy Warhol's soup can paintings. Look at how, um, again, this, this raises post, this, we see elements of postmodernism here. Taking the lowbrow and the highbrow. This is a painting, we normally see paintings on museum walls. You could see this painting in a museum wall, actually. Highbrow, right, high art painting. Lowbrow, Campbell soup. Right? The mixing of the highbrow and the lowbrow. Very postmodern. And kind of celebrating it as opposed to a modernist. Oh no, this is what our culture has come to. No, celebrating it, liking it. Fragmentation, the repeated image, the repetition of the image, which is a staple, staple of Warhol's work. Um, that also right, builds into that fragmentation, the mixing of high and low. Um, I would suggest that there's, we probably see camp involved here. This is not a completely serious painting. Um, it's playful. Um, this is very, very postmodern. Uh, and also commodification, right? Taking a commodity, something that is bought and sold, like Campbell's soup, and turning it into a work of art. Um, so this is a good example. And again, like we're not going to see all of the elements of postmodernism here, but we definitely see some. So we, we do see this in art as well as literature. 